Welcome everyone to day two of Kizkit's 12 Days of Kizkit. So today we have Junier and he will be presenting, he will be live coding a uh, coupon from scratch. So what is 12 Days of Kizkit? It's a 12 day, obviously a series of coding live streams that are being hosted on the Kizkit YouTube channel where you are right now. Starting yesterday, today we're on day two, and throughout this period, we'll be having a mix of Kizkit's coding live on YouTube channel, focusing on different areas of Kizkit coding. So yesterday we had Battle, Battle of the Bots. Today we've got Junyei and Kupong. And tomorrow, again, we have Junyei and Kupong. We have a few other things coming up. And you can look forward to dynamic circuits, to open source tips and tricks. And every day we have about one hour covering a different topic. You can check out the schedule um, on youtube.com forward slash Kizkit. And today I'm very, very excited to be introducing you to Junye, my colleague, who will be live Hello. coding Coupon. So Junye, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Do you mm -hmm. know what date Pong the arcade game was actually um, released? Oh, that's a very tough question. <laughs> I don't know the date, but I think it was 1971. It was 1972. 72, and okay. it was, yeah, November 29th. So we've just gone past the 50th anniversary. So I think this is oh, a really interesting time wow. to be having I this. I have no that and put on my game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. So do you want to go ahead, Junior? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so welcome everyone. And uh, so just to guess before getting started of coding, I'm just going to uh, share like a few minutes of slide of what Cubone is and why it's so important for me personally. And that's how I get into quantum and join Kiskit and the IBM quantum community. So just want to share about my personal journey and then we will show you uh, the live coding bit. So that would be five, 10 minutes of the slide. So <clears throat> hopefully you can see my slide here. And this talk I've given in the past. So uh, the idea is that it's a random walk to quantum building. And you can see my journey ha has not been smooth. So um, before 2019, before Coupon, and I was already getting into, interested in quantum building and tried to apply for PhD, get rejected. Uh, trying again, getting an experimental PhD. My lab was not in quantum, but I tried to convince my supervisor to, to work on quantum. And we got a grant and it was all good. But when we started to do experiments, uh, it was not as easy as we thought in the proposal. So I was pretty depressed by the time that um, in early 2019. And that's when Coupon happened. So we have the first ever Kiski camp and that was happening in New York and also Vermont. And here you can see a photo of my team. This is myself and my mentor, Jim, and then Jennifer and, <clears throat> and Jake. So they make, will make this coupon in 24 hours in this Kiski Cam hackathon. So it was a pretty simple game, just like a Pong game, but um, as just like a Pong game that it was simple, but actually launched the whole game industry that at least for myself, it launched my game uh, quantum career, even though before I was trying to do a PhD and it was not successful. And this, as you can see, that because of Coupon, I get more attraction. We get to um, demo on the Boston Museum of Science. We continue working on the Coupon and port it into a game engine, Unity game engine, and making a physical arcade machine. And that went on tour on EU quantum flagships. And that was just amazing. And slightly after, and we have the coding of Kiski series, probably most of our audience are familiar with. And the very first episode was Quantum Paul. I was so happy that it was featured on this episode. So as you can see here, I'm losing pretty badly. And this will be the game oh, that we are going to create from scratch that's from today and tomorrow. <laughs> so, and the most amazing thing about Coupon is that the Around that time in CERN, they are trying to organize a quantum hackathon and the organizer watched this Cubone video of coding with Kiski. And then he invited me personally to CERN every like competition played 
flight is paid and uh, we get to visit along with the hackathon we got to visit the LHC and the CMS detector underground so that was really amazing as a physics major this is like the best day of my life so that's really cool and uh, I will spare you the rest of the detail but basically I become Kiske Advocate the first ever batch Kiske Advocate and just one year after making coupon I joined IBM Quantum so this is just a short version of my Q, uh, quantum journey with Coupon. And the reason why I'm so excited after three and a half that I want to go back and uh, share with you how to create Coupon from scratch in this two part series. So now let me switch on to the code and just show you what is the end product uh, you will see after these two days. So this is the finished version. That's rewritten. So basically, you can see that in coupon, you have just like a pong game, you have left and right, you have the paddle, you have a ball, and you have some score showing the score of the two players. And at the bottom is what's special about coupon is that you will have um, you will have some of these uh, quantum circuit composer that actually create a quantum circuit and its quantum state okay <laughs> its quantum state is going to determine the position of the paddle of this quantum player so uh and you can see the state and you can create superposition and that so that is really a cool game to explain to people about um some basic concept of quantum circuit gates and also superposition so without further ado then let's go into the action and create a game from scratch okay <clears throat> So right now here, I have just an empty um, thing with a readme. And so the first step we want to do, just like any software project, you should create your virtual environment so that you can control all the packages installed in your, uh, in your developer environment. So let's go ahead and do, um, so I already have an environment, but I want to create a new one. So what you would do is quanta create minus n, meaning create a new environment. So I'm going to name it coupon live stream. So it might take a second. And what you create is a completely empty one. <clears throat> and then what we will do first thing is to install Python. And for this uh, demo, I'm going to install a brand new version of Python, Python 3.10. And that should take just like a 30 seconds or so. So we can wait a little bit. Okay, okay. So I think you will install a bunch of packages that is basic package of Python, including pip, which we will use for the next step to introduce the dependencies of the game. And so while waiting for this, we can um, create the dependencies. So I can just pip install, but also as a good habit, you can uh, create a requirements file. Require and for development, we use this requirements.dev, that's dev.txt. So, okay, let me go back here. Yes. And so for Cubone, there's only two uh, packages that we require. The first thing is the game engine that we are going to use in Python. It's called Pygame. And the second, of course, is Qiskit. And in this case, we only need Qiskit Terra, which is the core of Qiskit. So um, after this environment is created, uh, installing the Python 3.10, we can pip install these uh, dependencies or requirements within this file. So, yeah, let's see. And we should be done. So, let's see. Mm, I install 3.10. As it always happens, when you go live, Something happens. <laughs> Let's see. Hopefully it That's works. the fun of it, though. We learn how <laughs> problems get solved. We learn that, yeah. you know, all code is making that mistakes. That's the live coding because you see that this kind of thing happened to everyone. <laughs> yes. So now we're installing the dependencies. <laughs> and hopefully you, you can see that a bunch of packages that is the dependencies of Pygame or Kiskitera also got in, installed. And you can check that what are the packages 
you have um, based on these by pip freeze. So you have all this. Ah, I haven't oh, used right. pip freeze before. That's great. Okay, actually, I did something wrong. I created an environment, but I didn't um, activate it. So what I should do is activate. That's why there was this uh, problem. So I should activate, and I should install this. Sorry, I have to repeat again. But hopefully, it's fine. well, if anyone missed the code, they can <laughs> grab it now. Okay. So now we do this again to install the requirements. Okay, that is good. Right. And when I, I'm doing this kind of pull project, I like to use Git to keep track of my, um, just my progress so that you don't, you don't just like, if you make a mistake and go back. So mm -hmm. now we finish the first step. So I can do a git AC, which is uh, or git commit all. But I have an analysis on my local config, so I can just do git AC and can say, uh, let's say step one, set up virtual environment. And then all these changes will be kept checked as a one commit in your git history. And so that if there's anything wrong and you can go back to check or revert it. So now we set up the environment. And uh, as I tried to show you before, that we can do a pip freeze and we can see uh, the different packages got installed mm -hmm. by installing these requirements. And so now we go to se yeah. step two. We can just create a Pygame skeleton because we are going to use, um, we're going to create a game using Pygame. And just the first step, we run a very basic skeleton that I'm going to just show you what's the minimal requirement to create a Pygame and that how you can uh, just start running it and then we we'll start after that we will start adding other things so what you need is of course pygame and you need pygame.init and you need to have a screen which is a uh, pygame <clears throat> let me check <laughs> <laughs> screen is pygame that display or set mode which is a bit counterintuitive so then we can check the dimension. So we can put, let's say, 1,200 pixel by, there should be two, 750. That will show up nicely on my screen. And then we can also set the, set the title or caption. So we just say this game is called Cubone, of course. And lastly, we need to also set up a clock, which will keep the game running. Okay. So for any game, you can just put things in a, a function. And so we can put it in the loop, while loop. And uh, we just need to have a way that uh, to show, to exit the game. So in, we can just create a variable called exit. And at the beginning, we could set it as false. So while not exit, we keep the game running. And what we need is just clock, the clock, clock, the tick, 60. And that will just set the frame rate. So we are already 2022, so we make a 60 frames per second game, not 30 frames per second. So that will be the basic minimum. And so to run any script on Python, you should add these lines to check that this is running script. So that's what will be. But of course, we set we should add some code here to set the exit to be true so that we can exit. So this is what we are going to do. And I can just copy paste some code so that this will be faster. So what we will do is just <clears throat> in Pygame, it detects a series of events you do, either key press or close a button, exit button. So in this case, it's exit button. And so when it clicks the clock in the window, you will exit the game. Otherwise, you have to use your uh, operating system to queue the program. So we don't want to do that. <laughs> so now this is the absolute minimum of a Pi game. And it does nothing except 
creating a window and also setting a title as coupon. So let's see what happens if you run this. First time you run Pi game is also taking a bit some time, but the second time will be good. So now you have it. So all we have created is a window and you can see coupon is here and that's it. And if you click this X, it trigger the Pi game dot quit events and the exit the program. So that will be our second step. As usual, what we should check this as a git commit, creating a Pygame skeleton. Okay. Nice. Awesome, Junior. And now, now we should create a, <clears throat> now we should create a circuit grid. As I showed you at the beginning, uh, in Qpoint, there's a circuit grid to actually create quantum circuits. So we can go ahead and create that. Um, so to do that, I will actually copy a set of file that is, um, will be useful. Let me first create a folder called assets. And so we copy a few files. There's one folder with the images of the gates. You can see the gates, each of their own image. And also we have a cursor that's showing you where you are on the circuit grid. And this is a circuit grid file that is coming from my colleague or my mentor at the time when I was doing the Kiski cam. And this slightly clean up version, basically all these handles, how the circuit grid is created and behind the circuit grid, when you create this visual representation of the quantum circuit, you also create an actual model and also can convert to a quantum circuit object in Kiski. So this handle everything here. And uh, it also handles the inputs uh, so we are going to use that. And globals is a set of parameter we are going to use, uh, where handy parameter is going to use in the game uh, so that I don't have to, or every time when we're creating the same variable because you're going to use it across different files. For example, you can see the window width and window height. We set it here. Now we can use the global variables and things like that. And no types is used by the circuit grid file basically just giving some value of this different kind of node in the gates and just to have a way to distinguish them. And resources is some file to low images and the fonts, so we can just utilize them. So now we can go back to the, to the main file, coupon.py, and create a quantum circuit, uh, the circuit grid. So let's see how what we need to do. <clears throat> so first we need to import from the circuit grid file. So we should in from assets, import circuit grid. And here, basically we are initializing the game. And we should create a, um, no, we should do this instead. Instead, import a class so that we won't clash with the name. So I want to call circuit grid equals to circuit grid and um, we can put any position but uh, to make it just like the original coupon so I have some variable here five and I think it is global stock Q height or we do import global Height. So that will set the position of the grid. And so this initialize. So in any game, when you do game development, you should have a three basic stage. You initialize the game, which is we are doing here. And then we, within this while loop, what you do is you will update the game. And this happens every frame. So in the update game, you could be handling some inputs or some character or sprite moving, or for example, in our game, the paddle and ball will move. So that will happen in the update game section. 
And we also have draw game section that's only handling the drawing of the things. So in the first step, we can just try to see circuit grid of draw and we will give a screen to it. And that should show our circuit grid if I'm doing everything correct. Okay, let's hope. Uh, I'm not because this is very counterintuitive in, in Python <laughs> that you have to uh, flip the display. It's just strange. <laughs> but after that, it should work. Yes. So now we can see. Now, now we have this uh, circuit grid drawing here. We have the cursor, but you can see that if I do any button press, it doesn't do anything because we didn't add anything into the update rule in this part. So in fact, I should put the update here because here actually already detecting events and the, and the buttons and the keeper. So the first event we detected was quit, meaning you click the close button of the window, but um, if it is not, if it is, equals to pi game dot key down meaning that you are doing a key press then we can pass the key into the circuit grid circuit grid dot handle input uh, key so you pass the key and if you go back to the circuit grid and see handle input you can see that uh, I added this part. Any key that you pass into here, you will match the cases. By the way, this is a new feature of Python 3.10. That's why we have to install Python 3.10. If you use earlier version, it will match. But I really like this uh, thing because I used to program in C and that was how you do switch. Um, basically, you match the keys and then you can pull a function and with some argument. So what will happen is that now we map these keys. If I press key A, D, WS, you move left, right, up, down. And if I press mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, H, you just use the function that is written here to handle input X, basically as X gate to the circuit. And if you press a space, you remove the gate. Press C, you convert the gate to control gate. And you can use up, down, left, right in your keyboard to move around the, up, down to move around the control. You can see control the target, uh, the control qubit on, on top of your target qubit. And then left, right, you can rotate the qubit. If you do a X gate and then you rotate it, you become a rotation X gate. And we just set a step of uh, pi over eight in here. So, so now if I run the game, that I should be able to, yeah. If I press H at the arm again, press X, press the, at the X gate, if I press the left or right, you create a rotation X and I can change the angle. And if I press X here and I press C, you create control node. And I can press up and down to change the control node, control qubit. So that is really nice. That already shows you how to create a circuit grid using this file. And we'll use the quantum circuit creating by this circuit grid <coughs> to actually uh, calculate the, the state vector that will be actually showing on the state vector here and determine the position of the quantum paddles. So that is our step three. And as one thing you need to note is that as you can see, when you run a Python program, you sometimes generate this Python cache file. So in Git, that will be quite annoying, meaning every time you have this uh, garbage files that is created mm -hmm. and keep changing. So what you should do is to create a git ignore file so that they will just get ignored. So you keep changing on your local, but you won't push to your, you won't affect your git history. So what we do is uh, we can add this. Um, so the Python cache file is dot .pyc. And then the folder is cache. And also in Mac OS, which I'm using uh, to, to keep any local changes of a disk, they use this file DS store. So that could also create some main differences that you don't care. Uh, so we just add here. So we can add the 
Git ignore. So all this, we finish step three. Um, step three, which is to create, uh, to add a circuit grid. OK. So that's nice. And we also have a Git, uh, let's see, Git ignore. So next thing we we'll create is to draw the state vector grid. That is to representing the state. And we are doing three qubits, so we have eight states. And on the right and each of the state is going to corresponding to one of the pattern position. So let's go ahead and create a file. And we will use UI because it's part of the UI. Okay. So we have Python file. And we put it under assets. And we are also going to copy some other files because I need to draw it. So I need to have a font. So, so in the UI, I'm just going to um, import global variables that we have and resources because we need to load the font. So I will create a function that is just basically draw the state vector, state vector grid, and we take screen as parameter. So first we initialize the font. So let's take a look what's in the resources the font file. Basically, I created a class of fonts that is going to basically just to load, to contain the, this is the actual font we use in this TTF file. But when you load it in the game and set different sizes, uh, this view, view unit is used to scale the game. If you change the resolution, everything will change accordingly. So I basically set different font sizes to use in different places in the game. So I have game over, credit, replace, score, vector, and player. So basically, that's just a container to put that. And so I can uh, create a font, and that what we'll use. And what we want to draw is the state vector, and we have eight states. So we have a, so let's just create a variables called basis state, and we can put it into a list. And uh, we can just type, but maybe to just copy paste uh, <laughs> so that's what we want to draw zero 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 one all the way to one 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 so there's eight strings here that we want to draw and we also want to control the size of the state vector so that you will actually populate a whole field of this above the circuit grid we have this play field of the palm uh, quantum palm so we also want to set the height of each of these state vectors so that they evenly distribute it on this place. So we can set a new uh, state vector height, vector height variable. And so we have a few heights global variable, which is basically the how, how tall is the, the pong field. And then we have eight states. So we want to divide it by that. So that they will just evenly distribute. Um, this is it. So we have the length, but uh, this should be an integer because when we draw it, we need to use integer. That's the requirement for um, for the pie game. And we round it, and we also convert to integer. So that should give us the correct height. Okay. So next, we are just going to draw it. And so for i in range of length. Basis states. We're going to draw, and uh, it's just a particular way uh, how Pi game handles these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So we font dot vector font is basically getting this font, which is the state uh, state vector font size. So three times this with unit size, and we render it, and what we render, the text is contained inside a basis state. So I will put basis state and put an index. So for the first one, we're going to draw 000. zero, zero. And uh, there's some other parameter, anti analysis, and this is in color. 
So this is a PEX. And to draw it, we can use screen.blit. So we put the text that we need to draw and also position, and uh, I already have it. Basically, we want to draw it all the way to the right. So that should be global dot window width is the width of the window we set the display but minus the tech the width of this text otherwise it would draw just outside of the screen so that's what we need to handle to so get with and then the wire position is what we actually need to change because we need to, the first one is going to drink on top of the screen and then the last one will be the bottom of the play field so that's why we needed a stay vector height so we're going to just I times the stay vector height. But again, need to handle that uh, there's a one difference. So, so that should handle that. So that we finish writing the draw stay vector. And now we need to go back to the coupon file, just import that. And, and we put in the draw bar. So we can do UI dot show stay vector and put a screen. And let's see. This one again. Let's see. Okay, now you can see it. So we have draw this stay vector lastly with this font that we have chosen that give you this RKE uh, feeling 000 to 111. All right. So Again, we can do to stay back to the grid. So that's step four. Uh, we already created the circuit grid and we created a pie game skeleton and we also draw the stay vector. So the next one we should do is to create the pattern because it's a pong game. So you need to have the pattern. So let's see how we can do that. So we will create paddle as an object, just like um, just like anything in Python, we try to do object-oriented programming and we want to create an object. So we can create a new file called petal.py under the asset folder. And, and this is a sprite in PyGame. So sprite in uh, game development is something that might move or some object that you draw. So we will need to use uh, PyGame in this file. And we also need to use the global, which contain all the dimension and other constant we need to use. So let's create a new class for paddle. And we are going to inherit from the sprite class from PyGame. So, and when you create an object, you first need to define the uh, init state. So we put a self and sorry. And since we subclass this uh, sprite, so the first thing we need to do is to call a super in it so that you initialize all these things that is belong to the super class, which contain a lot of things that is useful for us. And in a sprite, you actually have the image, which is the how it looks, and also you have a uh, rectangle actually representing how we interact with other things. For example, paddle, later uh, we will actually have to do collision detection with the ball. So we need to have the dimensions. So these are the things that we need to add to this uh, paddle class. So the first thing we will do is to create image. And that would be a pipe game of surface. And we just need to put the dimension of this surface. And so for this, I, did, I use the same height as the stay vector because we want to make the classical and the quantum paddle the same size and the quantum paddle will be eight paddle and they will feel the uh, fuel fuel height so that's why we will have uh, the width it can be anything but i choose this width unit but uh, but the height is the paddle height that we put in a global variable and you can see basically it's a fuel height the space that is above the circuit grid to the top and divided by two to the power of the number of qubit, which is three qubit eight. So that we will just, a pedal will fill the screen. Mm. Yeah. 
and then we will make this white just like the original pawn and as I explained you need to get the rectangle of the game for other like calculating the detection and things so how you get it is to with this uh, image you can get the rectangle that is corresponding to this square how is this rectangle image and so we also can set the x position and we can we can um, put this into the argument so that we can initialize it x point and we can just say default value is one is zero so that should create a panel class or it has an image and a rectangle that represent the object and now we can go back to the main file import panel and uh, we can initialize the panel we could call classical panel so um, we don't even put anything because it already have the full argument of x and y position equals zero. So we already in initialize here, and then we just need to draw it here. Um, but actually, there's one one particular thing about Python that is the sprite itself cannot draw. You need to create a, a sprite group. So we can put all the moving sprite, the paddles and the balls, all in one group. Then we can draw them together. So we can do this eigen of sprite group and moving sprite of head classical pattern. So now we added this moving sprite, and then we can draw the moving sprite. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this should create the pattern. Okay. There you have it. So you can see this pattern is nicely joined here. Um, we will later want to move here, but for now, it's good enough that we know we created a thing and and it's drawing properly. Okay, so that will be the next step. Uh, let's just save it. Step five. At the classical battle. Okay. Okay. Now we have still have twenty minutes, so seems going pretty okay. Um, maybe we can pause. <laughs> There any questions or how are we doing with time? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think we've got any questions at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. If there are any viewers that do have questions, please throw them into the comments and we can get those to Junior. Um, yeah. Junior, and I'm thoroughly yeah. enjoying this. I'm <laughs> so happy that you're using Git and you're showing us, you know, how important it is to commit regularly. Uh, you know, it's one of those skills that all developers should have. Yes. So so that is actually the first time I used Git was actually by coupon three years and a half ago. I mean, actually, wow. most of my actual programming was started in coupon, which is <laughs> which is a bit sad to say. Like I learned yeah. programming in high school and you can write C and some simple script, but the actual mm. like a program that with all this like infrastructure to like you create classes and everything and and using Git and also collaborate with other people, which is um, almost all the time. Now you usually don't write a software by one person. So all these skills I learned through Coupon. So even though it's a very simple game, I learned a lot of these software development skills through creating a game. So that's why I really enjoy this uh, whole experience of, of Coupon. <laughs> so we do have a question now. So Abby okay. has asked us, how does this version of Coupon differ from the original version you coded? <laughs> that is a very good question and i know <laughs> i'll be planted this question <laughs> so uh maybe some of you follow me on twitter or linkedin and i mentioned this so this version now is completely clean up from two weeks ago and i don't even want to show you my original code <laughs> <laughs> it was just absolutely uh rubbish that i didn't know much about coding and so through the preparation of this uh, live stream series I actually rewrote the whole game so that it's more logical like the way that i show you that each object have its own file and then create it as classes and the thing that does with the object is makes sense and uh 
So in terms of line of lines of code, I actually managed to shrink it from 2,000 lines to just 1,000 lines in the new version. And more importantly, is the whole logic of the code is much more, uh, much more clean. And because I have to do the live streaming showing you, I cannot show you the old version, and which I I don't think I can understand now. <laughs> Nothing like it. having to show your work to ensure that it's all cleaned up and organized. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. So that was a good intermission. So we can continue to go ahead to the next one. So now we created a classical pattern. So we can also go ahead to create a quantum pattern. And let's see how to go. And um, so the quantum battle, as I show you at the beginning, um, is actually have eight different battles and each of the battle corresponding to state vector. So first we are just going to create this quantum battle class and uh, and each, and it has contained all these eight battles. And then later we will just, we introduce the classical computer and quantum computer as the player and they will be the class of object that actually control the pad classical pedal and the quantum pedal. And the quantum circuit grid circuit is going to determine the state we're showing you drawing like different um, gray value to represent the probability of the state. And also we also need to um, handle the measurement when the ball actually reached the quantum pedal part, when it's very close, you actually trigger a measurement. So you will collapse the state and only one of the eight Will be possible. So all these things we will handle later. So first step to create a quantum pedal is just to just like a classical pedal, uh, we we create it and draw it, and the logic to control it we can implement later. Okay, so we can just to create another class called quantum pedals. And in this case, I don't inherit from the sprite because it actually have eight sprites. So the way that I have to handle it is instead of inherent or subclass this, I put this paddle, a normal paddle, as one of the attributes of these paddles. So that's why they're plural paddles. So I can initiate this and um, let's see. So all I need to do at the first step is to have this self the paddles and it will be a list. And we are going to add eight of these, eight paddles of the normal classical paddle into this quantum paddles. So we do a for loop A in range to the power of the number of qubits. So each one we are going to attach or append a pedal. And we can set a position. And in this case, only X position matters because the Y position will be corresponding to the state vector that we join. So, which is just um, I times globals dot pedal height. Globals. So we need to have back this X position here. So that should create a quantum battle. So we can go back to the main file. Here we can do the same as this. Oops. Uh, okay, let's do quantum paddles equals the paddle dot quantum paddles. And we can put exposition so that we put it very close to the to the state vectors. And that would be, let's see, that would be similar to the state vector that we did um, window width, which is all the way it is, with some offset so that it won't draw outside of the screen. So that would be nine times global width. Of course, this I have fine tuned. <laughs> so it's not like something that you can, you already know, so you, okay. That will actually give you a position that will be just before the state vector on the right. And while we're doing this, why don't we just put this also? So it's symmetrical. So we are going to put uh, exposition of uh, time times global with you as well. So that here is shift to here, here is here. So it's symmetrical about the central line. So quantum battle, 
the classical pattern. So we just need to add this quantum pattern. And that should draw it because the drawing is containing from the moving sprite. Let's have a look. Mm, okay, that is confusing. <laughs> so in fact, the quantum paddle is not the actual sprite. I forget that. It's actually in the attribute. So you should dot paddles because this is where the paddles, the A paddles are contained. So that should work this time. Oh, boom. OK, now you see there's A paddle. Now you just look at like just one, but actually they're in A individually and they are just connecting. Mm -hmm because the, the height, the width is actually exactly touching. So you will see a paddle here. And later, we will just, yeah, using the quantum state to correspond to this. But for now, we have the quantum gates. And we have the classical paddle, and we have the quantum paddle. The next thing we are going to do is to create a ball. OK, so let's do this. Step six, and quantum paddles. Okay. So now we are adding the ball. So it's similar to the paddle, we just create a new file here for ball.py. And we do very similar things because it's also a sprite. So we need to import a Pygame. We import um, global variables that we have for the game. And we just create a class called ball. And Sprite sprite and oops. Okay. Sometimes the IDs are too smart <laughs> creating these things. Maybe it makes sense. Okay. So the same thing, we'll have a image and that will be a surface And the size is just the width unit. And it's a square, so we'll be the same. And same, we fill it with um, white color. And we get the rectangle. Uh, but this case, we don't have to get set the X and Y because actually it's going to change all the time. Um, so that's the first step we created. Um, if you don't do anything, then you just X and Y equals zero, which is on the left corner. So all we need to do now is to, same as the paddle, import a ball, and we can create a new ball here, home ball. Because I want to do want to clash with the name here. So I just go bumble equals to four dot four and similar to here. Bumble. And that should draw the ball. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it does. So now you can see that the ball is here. Of course the ball should move and that's what we are going to do. And I didn't do in the paddle because actually they're controlling by something, but the ball basically is just at a physical object that bounces. So the first thing we would do is, maybe I go back to it. So what you would do is it just goes. So we should assign a velocity that is how, is like a vector of the ball, where how it goes in X and Y direction. And also you should have a collision detection with the paddles later on. And also, when it hits the bottom and top, it should bounce back instead of just going all the way. So we can first just set a just set something so that you just keep going. So you can create a new variable called velocity, and that will be like a list of two list of two numbers, and it's just like contain describe the vector. So then say one and two, it will change depending when the game. Uh, happens, but we can initialize to some numbers so that it, it already get code. So then we can define updates. Just like I explained to you, for all games, 
development you have initialized the updates and draw. So you can um, write how the how the ball will update itself based on the interactions in the game. So if nothing happens, you just keep going. So the exposition of the rectangle that represent the sprite, you should just uh, pass equals to the velocity. And we use the first component of the of the velocity vector to represent x position. So the second one will be y. Um, and that should keep it going. So we just keep adding. Every frame, you add the velocity, which is one pixel. So you have 60 frames per second. So in x direction, you just, every second, you move 60 uh, pixels. And then y is 120. So if everything, OK. And then we need to go to this part as update again to add this board, no, board home ball. So now you see the ball moves. And you also notice a thing that <laughs> they left a whole child here that there's something we need to fix. And another thing is that it doesn't bounce. Yeah. The reason why I leave this whole thing <laughs> instead of just one ball is because every time you draw a frame, you should actually clean the frame so that the previous game, previous frame won't leave. But now we haven't done it because for all the other things that we have drawn so far are static. So you didn't notice that. So what you should do is that in the draw game group, you should actually do screen dot fill black so, or fill any black one. But for us, it's just black. And so now each frame will be new. And you see that now the ball only only the current frame of the boy is shown. And so that fixed one thing. Um, another thing we want to add is that you bounce. So to bounce is actually a very simple logic in this. Basically, when you reach this top or bottom edge of the screen, uh, of the display field of the pong, you just have to reverse the y, y speed. So we can check uh, in this update rule, uh, update uh, method. So if the y position of this rectangle is smaller than zero, meaning that so this the zero starts from top left. So zero means less than zero means above the screen. So this is top, detecting the top top edge. Or if the y is larger than the field globe. Meaning the bottom of the edge. This is how how height is the view uh, of the pond. Then all you need to do is velocity one equals to the reverse. It bounces. Left x direction doesn't need to change. Only the y direction. So now, if you run the game, it should bounce. Okay. So let's see how it goes. So, boom. And then when you reach to the top. Boom. And uh, just a small fine tune, you can realize that actually here, it goes to the here. You should shift a little bit, uh, just shift by the height of the pawn itself. So we need to minus uh, with unit, which is the height of the pawn. So if you see one more time, we should be able to see that it bounces on this edge instead of going through it. Boom. Yes. So that is good. So that we finished the step of adding the ball. Okay. Step seven. Add the ball. Okay. So we are almost towards the end. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just to introduce the class computer, which is actually the com computer AI that you're going to uh, play against. And then probably we have to conclude today's session and the remaining uh, implementation we can leave for tomorrow. So um, let's see. So now we have the ball and the paddle, but the classical paddle, there's no logic to control it. 
And uh, so for that, we can we create a computer. And in this game, we have a classical computer and quantum computer. And the quantum computer actually is you, the player, which controls through the circuit grid, creating circuit to determine the position of battle. But the classical battle and controlled by classical computer is like ordinary your computer CPU uh, that you're playing against. So we can just create, a, just like all the other things we have done, we create a new file called computer py and um, in this case we don't need to import anything and um, and we are going to create a class computer and a quantum computer so in object oriented or programming it's good that you can define a base class that is going to be similar to uh, the other two we are creating a class computer and quantum computer and they're similar but different so we can create a base class defining some of these uh, basic apis so that it's easier to handle this uh, hierarchy. And also, if you want to uh, do any of this class um, logic that you want to see, it will be good. For our case, it's, it's, it's not critical, but uh, it's a good habit to do that. So now we can just create a computer class. And we, we actually don't need to put much. We just need to say that it is uh, yeah, initialized, which any class should have, and we pass. You don't do anything and you should also have updates which is like any object in the game you should have this so it doesn't really do much but for the sake of uh, teaching you more uh, object oriented things so i created this so we can create a class computer that is going to uh, inherit this class so we can do a classical computer and inherit computer class so you can do the init and it already does this but actually no need because we didn't do anything in the super part so what the classical computer should have is that it should have a paddle because we will assign a paddle that is actually controlled by this class computer so it equals to paddle so that means we need to add here the paddle to pass in and it should also contain a score which we'll show on the on the UI later. And to start will be score zero. And we also set the speed of the how fast this class computer uh, will go. So what happens when you when you have these uh, computers is that it should do something based on the position of the paddle. So now we are just implementing a very rudimentary AI. <laughs> AI is overrated to say that. It's just a just a, some script to show. So if it just basically follows a ball with some speed. So we can define the update and it should pass in a ball based on the ball position, you should do something. So we can just say if self the paddle dot rectangle dot center y. We use center y rather than y uh, because x and y in this rectangle is the top left. So in this case, we want to use the center. Um, so if the center position of the paddle is, uh, let's say, below the ball, you should just go up, right? If you're below the ball, you try to go up so that you go closer to the ball. So what we do is, if this is minus ball dot rec dot center y is larger than zero, then we just move the paddle. Uh, in this case, y is fine. Minus h uh, self dot speed. So that's where the speed comes in. If you increase the speed, you go faster. So otherwise, that means if the paddle is above the above the ball, then we do the opposite. So we can do it. Mm -hmm. That should do the trick. So now we have created a very basic um, AI for controlling your components AI. And so we go back to the main script, import computer, and we create a new classical computer. Computer, classical computer. And we pass in the classical panel. And so we go to the update root to 
to add classical computer dot updates. So now it should work. Oh no. We need to pass in the balls because without the balls information, the computer doesn't know how to do what to do. Okay. So now you can see the pedal actually following the ball. But right now it doesn't do anything because we haven't added the collision. Mm -hmm. So, but if we added it, it should bounce from here. And we should also um, start the ball from here. So that will be tomorrow's session. So now we are reaching one hour. So I just give you uh, some uh, sneak peek of what we are going to do tomorrow. So now from this to the ample that we're going to do, there's still a few things we need to do. So as mentioned, you need to add the uh, collision detection. And we also need to draw the paddles based on the state of the quantum circuit. And then we also need to add a measurement. When the ball reaches around this area, you have a measurement and trigger the paddle. And then we also need to draw the UI where we have to show the class computer on the left, quantum computer on the right, and the classic dash line in the middle and with the two scores. And then if you have time, I'll also try to add, introduce the concept of scenes, because in games you have different scenes. Now we're directly entering to the game scene, and we can also set the score of winning or lose, that you will go to win, screen, win scene or lose scene. Or if you even have more time, we can add the main, main menu. But we'll see. And uh, yeah, so with that, I think that concludes today, and we can still stay uh to answer any questions yeah so we do have a question um mm -hmm. iskandar has asked do you plan to deploy the game to some server so it is so it will be accessible without installation from the repo yeah i have thought about this and i'm not very familiar with like pygame where whether it's able to do this probably this i have mm -hmm. tried a long time ago when it was like 2019 and it was just not the best but I did create a few version of um, coupon and that people can try. It's not exactly the same, but um, you could have fun and play on the browser in this version, which is made on uh, maybe if Pico 8 is a virtual uh, retro console, so you can play this one. And I made this awesome. to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of <laughs> Game Boy. So I can show you here. Um, okay. I need a different browser. So yeah, I, I think it's good because to actually run the game, you have to install the de dependencies and also um, and also we have to just handle a lot of things. It would be good that you have a standalone package or in this case, even better, just a browser. You can even play on the phone. So I can drop the thing in the link later. That the, so yeah. in this version is basically very similar, and you have this Game Boy uh, palette that looks nice. like it. Uh, but yeah, it does very similar thing. And in this case, the AI is even more stupid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you, you have the essential things. You have the circuit grid. You have the yeah, state vector grid. You have the paddle, classical, and quantum. The score and the dash line in the middle. And uh, but in this circuit grid, I didn't introduce the control node control gate and also in terms of gate I only put alma gate and x gate because mm -hmm. in this particular uh, Pico 8 uh, they only have two buttons not like you don't have a full keyboard so but essentially alma gate and x gate is already enough to to show the whole uh, game yeah so yeah, and, fun with this. <laughs> yeah the the coupon repo is public so if somebody wants to fork or tackle and yeah. um you know try this out themselves then then they're more than welcome to to take on the challenge yeah so you can there's actually i make a few versions of coupon already as i yeah. show you in the slide um so now i can create a github organization of coupon containing a few for example live stream things are here so don't look at it yet it's like spoiler <laughs> <laughs> and uh so we have pico a version here original version based on pi game and we also have Unity version, which was the version used in this quantum market physical machine and use Unity game engine that is a production grade game engine that people will make game to make money. And there were, I also have a attempt for JavaScript, but it didn't 
work very well. So I didn't do it because uh, that was the reason that I want to write this is because it's easy to show on the browser. So at the end, I created Pico 8, which which I'm also easily play in browser. So that's why I dropped that project. But yeah. So if you have any interesting thing uh, you want to do with Cubone, let me know. But tomorrow we will see each other again. So you have a chance. Yes. And at the yes. same time, I also have this Kiske African mentorship program going on that are working. I have a few mentees working with me to make actually this version online playable with two players. So when that is a release, we can maybe we write a blog or something and then more people can play this and online competing with each other. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Right, so we are coming to a close of day two of the 12 days of Kiskit. I want to thank everyone for watching, for, for participating, for your comments and your questions. Um, like Junior has already said, there is far too much awesomeness to contain in one day. So Junior will be back tomorrow um, at the same time we started today. Is that correct? Yes. And and Brian will be hosting. Yes. Um, so please, you know, tomorrow, same time, same place. Uh, you can hit the bell button to get a notification. You know, all the usuals, like, subscribe, leave comments, leave questions. And we are very excited to have you back tomorrow for day three of the 12 Days of Kiss Kit. Thank you yeah. so much. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Junior. <laughs> Thank you for hosting. <laughs>